Okay, so in this problem we're told, to what temperature will 8,700 joules of heat raise three kilograms of water that is initially at 10 degrees Celsius? So in order to solve this problem, the, always thing, uh, the first thing you always wanna do is write down what we're given. So essentially we have this mass of water, which is three kilograms. And so we're gonna add 8,700 joules of heat, right? So that's the amount of energy. And then we know it's initially at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. And what we're trying to find is the temperature it's gonna be now after adding, right, 8,700 joules of energy. So we can say T final equals question mark because that's what we're trying to solve for here. And so uh, in order to do this, you need to know the specific, uh, specific heat capacity formula. Uh, and so this is the formula here, Q equals MC delta T. So Q is the amount of energy you're adding. So in this case, uh, 8,700 joules of heat. Uh, and so that's gonna be equal to M, which is the mass, times C, which is a constant called the specific heat capacity. And it's basically a different value uh, depending on the substance. So in this case, we're dealing with water. So C, uh, we call it CW, which is the specific heat capacity of water is 4,186 joules uh, per degree uh, Celsius kilogram, right? So kilogram per joule per kilogram degree Celsius. And then delta T is basically the change in the temperature. So uh, you can just rewrite this as M, C, uh, and then, right, the change in temperature is just the same thing as the final temperature, T final, minus T initial. And so uh, basically, it's just as simple as plugging it in. We know how much energy uh, is going to be added, so 8,700 joules of heat. We know the mass, and then we know the specific heat capacity of water, and we know the initial. So uh, the only variable that would be left is your uh, final temperature here. So it would just be a matter of solving it. Keep in mind, though, when you do this, there are different values for the specific heat capacity, uh, depending on the type of substance, but also the units have to make sense. So notice we're using joules here for energy, uh, and then our temperature is in degrees Celsius, and then our mass is in kilograms. So sometimes they'll give it in different units, so you gotta make sure when you use uh, whatever value for the specific heat capacity, it's actually in the correct units. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. Uh, and now we just gotta plug it in. So we know Q is 8,700, and then this is three, this is 4,186, times T final, which we're solving for, uh, minus our initial temperature, which is 10 degrees Celsius. So if you go ahead and do this, uh, you would divide both sides by this, 4,186 times three, 4,186. So we have that when you go ahead and do this, so 8,700 divided by three times 4,186, you will get point. 69229 equals T final minus 10. And then to solve for T final, you would just add. So we just add 10 to this value. And you'll get T final is equal to 10.693. Uh, so 10.693, uh, you can just round to 10.7 or however you'd like to. Keep in mind the units of this are going to be the same as the units for the other temperature we plugged in, which was Celsius. So uh, the final temperature when we add, uh, right, 8,700 joules of heat, uh, you're going to get 10.7 degrees Celsius. So another thing to keep in mind, though, uh, right, so this is your answer. Uh, these values, you can look up in your textbook. They should give you a table uh, for the different substances and their specific heat capacity. Uh, but yeah, so just a simple plugging it in and solving for uh, what we needed. But you had to make sure you have uh, found your specific heat capacity for water. And uh, yeah, so this right here is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this video useful.